these are flashy colors. Uh, I think he said they were a serbat. Uh, he's like, where's my carrot? He said, screw you, you didn't get my carrot. Hi, cutie. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, aren't you precious? Aren't you just precious? I was like, because I thought it said, ask if you need a health cert. Yeah. Like for somewhere. Like I just totally like blanked and I then I remembered that I'll be back to uh, California soonish. So I She's pretty tubby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she looks sound. They look sound. They're how all you... fours and, uh, or they're all fives and sixes. Okay. How's your? How do you like your black one? I'm happy with mine. That other girl's bay looks fine. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. yeah. She moves nice. As far as I don't, I mean, carefulness basically is all that yeah. can go off. Of yeah. Me, so. And they all look sound. All right, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, nice. Then? Yeah. Now you just, just go to regular regular spot. We'll get you loaded. Okay, thank you. These are both ours. Oh, yours is big, babe. She's a nice size. Yeah, the black one. The, and the, the bay is mine. And the, that one's yours? Yeah, this one's yours, this black one right here. Isn't she pretty? Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Hi. Hi. How many swirls? Just one? Two, huh? Let me see mine. Oh, these are nice looking, Grant. Oh, it's out of focus. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi, pretty girl. Hi. No. for a fellow competitor who's um, from Colorado and the other bay is hers and we're sitting here waiting because um, discovered that her horse was blind in one eye so just wanted to get her permission um, to she wanted to keep her or exchange her and she decided she wanted to keep her That was very exciting. Huh. Hey, 
there, pretty girl. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Huh? This is Pantera, first day. Esto es Pantera, primer día de trabajo. Uh, so you're going to see kind of side by side um, that Asiro and I have uh, very different methods of training and uh, there really is no right or wrong way. He, he has his way. It works really good and I have my way that works for me and um, seems to work good. Uh, and, and there are, are, of course, many other ways to, to go about this. Uh, and there was like, I don't know, hours and hours of footage. So I had to cut a lot out. Just kind of give you a gist of how he does things and kind of how I do things. Um, and so he's just trying to get close to her here um, to see if he could touch her. And uh, she's she's pretty spicy, like she's got a lot of energy. Um, he actually had to work her quite a bit. She got sweaty um, because she's just kind of a, she's kind of a spunky little thing. And um, here he did go ahead and rope her. Um, he's trying to, he wants to get a halter on her so he can progress with training because uh, she she didn't get a halter put on in the shoot because um, they, they didn't have one that fit. And so um, right now he's just trying to get her used to that rope and used to the pressure. You could see his energy is super low. Um, he's not really trying to, you know, get her upset or anything um, and just letting her know that there's nothing to be afraid of here. And he puts a little bit of pressure on her, um, trying to teach her to yield to that. And uh, you can see with his body too, I mean, he does try to block her because he really doesn't want her bolting. And this is where you stop them from ever learning that bolting is a good idea, is right here. If you don't do this step right, uh, you're gonna train a bolter and then you got a really big problem and it takes a long time to fix that. So here he's just swinging the rope, getting her used to it, seeing how she responds when he touches her with it, um, touches on her face. Um, and you can see she's very engaged with him. Um, she's scared, but she's not like um, shutting down um, and she's she's participating in the training. So he's got a little bit closer here. He's still rubbing her with that rope. And I wanna say that he, he this is about as close as she would let him get and she didn't really let him touch her um, at this stage. Uh, and he's been at this for for a while. Um, I want to say he probably was at this at an hour at this point. And so he's just trying to wave his hand, to desensitize her to this hand waving. And he just a little bit of pressure on that rope, but not too much. And it's a big soft rope. It's not like a, like a lariat that's going to cut her or, or cut off her breathing. And the way he has it looped is it stays loose um, so it won't choke her or anything like that because that's not what we're trying to do. Um, and, and it won't hurt her because it's a nice, thick, soft rope. So he's trying to see if, if she can, will smell him. Because um, sometimes, you know, they really like to get a good whiff of you to kind of figure you out. Uh, and she wasn't quite to that stage yet. See, it was too much pressure and she took off, but he pulled her around and that's how you stop that bolting from happening. So after he'd been at this for quite a while, he realized that this was not really working. And so he has a stick there with a loop at the end, with a hook. And so he was able to grab that rope because he wanted to get the rope off her, but she wouldn't let him near her. And so he was able to grab that loop and pull that so that he can get that rope off of her. Um, because you, you, you can't leave that on them, of course. But that his little tool, it's always have, uh, nice to have a little hook like Poor that. Thing. Oh, yeah, you're right. So we were going to try and um, see if we get close enough to loosen her halter. Um, <clears throat> But she was not having any of it. Uh, so Sido decided to go ahead and rope her. And she also wasn't having any of that. <laughs> so you'll see in a few minutes. She was really, really clever with avoiding the, 
the loop. She just knew exactly when to duck her head and avoid the loop. Uh, so it took a little while for him to, to kind of get it over. As you can see, she, she's real smart about that. And <clears throat> when he did finally get it on her, um, she was super not happy about that pressure. And this took a little while. So then we realized that this wasn't going to work either. Um, a lot of times we can we can do this and then we can get up close to them and rub on them and we could loosen the halter and things like that. And, and she just was not having any of it. Uh, so we ended up putting her in the chute and adjusting her halter in the chute because we do have a chute uh, that we only use if we absolutely have to. And it was just so... Uh, important to try and get that halter loose as quickly as possible. Uh, we had to you know, expedite it a little bit with time. Um, see, she's just not not feeling it. She let him be able to touch her a little bit, but we really needed to get that thing loose fast, so we had to use the chute. And here we, uh, you can see we loosened her halter, so it's loose around her jaw so she could chew. And we ended up putting a drag rope on her, which she did not seem to mind at all, did not affect her. Uh, here we have um, Pantera in the chute, because uh, Isidro just could not get, she just was not having it. She would not let him get close to her. He spent hours um, just trying to get close to enough to her to put a halter on, and she just was not having it. So um, Chonkla did really well in the chute, and so we decided to put Pantera in there and see how she would do. She did pretty good. Um, we had to just take it really slow and he was able to get a halter on her. Uh, and her reaction to the rope was very different. She, she really thought that thing was a snake and she kind of ran around a little bit and jumped around and uh, we didn't get any video of that because we were trying to stop her from going under the pen. Uh, so we had to reinforce her pen a little bit. Uh, and then she settled down and um, finally got used to it, but it took her a few hours. And so he used his hook to grab that lead rope, and then he puts a longer lead rope on it so that he can work her with that. Uh, and he, he actually had been at this for a while, swinging that um, stick and string um, to desensitize her to it, and she thought he was murdering her. Um, she got over it, though, and now, um, after working with her a bit, he's able to kind of touch her. You can see she's not thrilled about it. Her ears are hilarious. They remind me of a, of a burrow. <laughs> when you touch their forehead, their ears go back. Um, but she's, you know, obviously much more relaxed here. Her eye is softer, uh, and uh, but it did. He had to really earn this touch. Um, she was not given it easily. That's for sure. And that was nice that he was able to move that halter, and she didn't react. And I think this is the first time that he's really touched her neck. Uh, and she seemed pretty cool with that. It seems like her, her biggest issue is the head. Uh, once he kind of got past the head, uh, she was a little more accepting with, with her body being touched. And so here he is working with Chankla. Um, I had, I don't know if I'd said this already, I'd been hurt a couple years ago at this stage in training um, pretty bad. And so um, I'm, I'm not able to control my emotions well at this stage. And so a sitter always starts them at this very, very beginning and then I can kind of gauge and see how they react, um, how they react to him. Are they biters, strikers? Are they kickers? Um, that sort of thing. And he's just, uh, you know, we had put that drag rope on her, and he's just kind of teaching her to yield to that, to that pressure a bit. Um, and she actually did really, really well. And and by the end of this, she was yielding um, easily to that, Carolyn, to that no, drag rope. And I could tell by watching him work with her that uh, she didn't have a lot of um, a lot of fight or aggression in her. It was it really wasn't her jam. She's a little mouthy with things, so I have to kind of watch her there. Um, like she'll want to sniff you, and she guards her sides. Do you see how she turns her head like that? She's very protective of her sides and guards them. Um, and so I just have to be very cognizant of that and realize what she's doing there is she's um, protecting her side. Uh, it's nice to realize that she's so incredibly flexible with that head and that neck. Yeah, that's like crazy flexibility there, <laughs> which is great. Tells me that things are feeling pretty good in her body. And she just started to um, eat better with that halter looser around her jaw, which was good. You know, not that 
she couldn't afford to lose a few pounds. And so overall, I mean, she, she didn't really react terribly to any of this. Um, you can see she yeah, that's nice. pulls on that. She yields. She sure and is. <clears throat> he releases that pressure. But um, especially on this left side, she's very protective of this left side. Um, she turns her head and guards it a lot more, I've noticed. So I'm super grateful that Isidro is, is great at this stage of training. And I can see how, um, how she responds to him. Um, and then you'll see later, uh, I, I'm a little slower in my start and kind of what I do. Um, and we got that drag rope off of her pretty quickly. We don't like to leave them on. And so here she is, he's petting her on the side and she seems pretty cool with that. Um, he discovered that her, her tag was kind of tight and was bothering her. So just went ahead and took it off. Um, you know, we like to try and earn those. <laughs> so I would have liked to have taken it off, but, um, my, my sentiment, you know, my sentiments do not outweigh, uh, what the horse needs at this time. And she needed that off cause it's kind of tight around her and bothering her. So we went ahead and, and a stove took it off and she handled it great. I guess super happy with how she handled that. So here I am, this is the first day that I've actually worked with her, and I just did a lot of approach and retreat and touching her uh, and trying to have her stay with me, and I didn't really touch that lead rope, didn't really want to. Um, I think it was the next day I ended up taking it off of her, so she had it on for two days, which is not very long at all. Um, she was super, super smart with it. Uh, I wish I had video of that, because she would step on it, and then she would back up, and it very calm and just kind of figure the puzzle out. So this is a Citro, um, another day, uh, working with Pantera and she is, um, he's still trying to be able to get up to her and you see she's still not having it. Um, I know a lot of these Devil's Garden horses are easy and, and this one, I wouldn't say she's hard, but she's not giving anything away for free. That's for sure. So he's got his little stick with the hook there, picked up the lead rope. Uh, I wanted to show this so you can kind of see how he does that because he doesn't want her walking around with this crazy long drag um, that she's going to be stepping on and getting tangled up with. And then he just tied a longer lead rope on that. And already she's a bit easier for him to touch this day. Uh, still not, you know, of course, super relaxed or anything. And here what he's doing is he's going ahead and, and teaching her to to lunge a little bit and move her feet and see how she wants to kind of tell him where she wants to go. And he's behind the drive line here, pushing her, um, telling her to go ahead and move. And she wants to say, no, I want to go the other way. And he's like, nope, you're going to go this way. Um, and then when she's going where, where he wants her to go, you know, he's nice and relaxed. And he did this for quite a while. It's like this particular horse, she kind of needed to move her feet to, to kind of think through things. Um, and so instead of, you know, trying to make her stand still, he went ahead and just worked on something else to get her to kind of move around uh, and work through her issues. And you can see already she's come around quite a bit. She's not thrilled with that. Her ears are, are so funny. She's super expressive with those ears. But she's not mean, like she's not a biter or a striker or a kicker or nothing like that. So what he's doing right now, he's just trying to throw that rope over her back. And she's, of course, she thinks he's murdering her. And so um, it, I cut a lot of the video out. Otherwise, it would have been like hours and hours long. Um, where she just went round and round and round while he was throwing that over. And she finally settled down here. And he's just moving it over her back. And you're used to it. And she's pretty flinchy. Now he's able to... Walk up and touch her. I like how she looks at him when he backs off, you know. She's still participating in the training, which is, you know, what we want. And that's much better. She's not really turning her head away and trying to avoid him now, um, which is great. And she's not shut down either. Like the worst thing we want is a horse just standing there with a dead eye, just tolerating us. We still want them to be interested and, 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 and aware and awake and focused on us.
and participating in the training, um, not just tolerating us. So here's an entirely other day, and so she no longer has a drag rope, and he was able to just walk up and clip that um, lead rope onto her halter, and so hopefully by next week, the halters will be off as well, and we can just walk in and halter them. Um, we don't do any round pen work or anything until uh, we can walk up, halter them, and touch them all over, and, and they lead, and lead well. And then we start to do some type of um, round penning type work. Uh, so these, this is the important step for, we both agree on that. Um, we don't do a whole lot of running them around or anything like that. That's not really our jam. And so here he's got a flag and he's kind of pushing her a little bit with the flag, trying to work on um, leading. And uh, she's picking it up pretty good. So when she gets stuck, he just moves that hind end over and asked her to walk forward, which she did. And since he used that to push her, now he's desensitizing her with that flag, which is something you don't ever want to miss that step. Um, you don't want them to be afraid of your tools. And uh, she's, she's pretty curious and brave. So uh, here I am, um, I think uh, there's a day I didn't record anything, and then um, this is another day. And you can see here, I'm just using a stick and string, uh, and I'm rubbing her with it. And you can see how she's very guarded on this side. She's moving her head there to kind of block me. Um, and so I'm rubbing that, and I went back pretty far. And I, I discovered that she's like super obsessed with carrots. Um, so I have a combination of some hay cubes and carrots in my pouch there, and I'm incorporating some positive reinforcement uh, a little earlier than I do have in the past, simply because this horse actually likes treats, so um, I'm able to utilize that. And um, here I am throwing the stick and string, and I let her run around a little bit, and I, my energy is super low, and I just keep throwing it, um, and then you can't hear me, but I, I you know, give her a click, and then give her a treat and I throw it on the ground. And the main reason I'm throwing this on the ground is she will take it from my hand, but uh, she is the type that kind of wants to come in your space and be a little pushy. And so I want to nip that in the butt here and I don't want her coming into my space unless I invite her. Uh, so I am either put it in that bin, a treat, or um, I throw it and she's smart enough to, to go and look for it and get it. And so she's starting to pick up on this whole, um, you know, she gets a, you know, gets a treat. I, I reinforce her that, okay, she stood still. She let me rub her with that stick and she stayed calm and I reward that. Uh, so I'm using a combination of negative and positive reinforcement here, uh, which for me, uh, it works well um, for my style. Um, and it, you know, helps, uh, I feel like I can get further using as many tools as I possibly can. So this is really good. Like I was able to rub all the way back there without her moving, um, which is kind of a big deal. And so I got further and further back. Now this side, she could see she bends way further and really, really blocks me. And I'm giving her a little more space by not being too close to her because uh, she's so much more guarded on this side. And so I click right when she turned her head away um, and kind of release that guard um, a little bit, and so I'm rewarding that, um, because she'll let me touch her, uh, but she was being super, super guarded, and I didn't want to push her past that and make her defensive, um, and so this was great. I was able to throw that, uh, and I released when she kind of was twitching less, um, and I rewarded her, so I did the click to say, yep, that was the right answer, and then release and give her a break, and I back way off so she can eat her treat and enjoy it without having the pressure of me being right there. Uh, and then I also discovered that she's super, super reactive around her head and her pole. Uh, and so I have a long lunge whip here that's kind of broken, so the end is super soft. Um, and I'm just kind of rubbing her all over. It's like a really long lunge whip and rubbing her all over and rewarding her for not reacting. You can see she kind of picked up her leg there. And the, I'm pretty happy that I can rub down her her hind end and her back leg without her running off because I'm, I'm not attached to her in any way. She's She has no lead rope on. Um, we took that off and I, I want her to be able to stand there and if she really wants to leave, she can leave. Um, and here I'm just working on her head and her ears. Like she could totally leave and she had a couple of times um, 
and then I'll just come back and then try it again. And then when she's cool with it, she gets a, a click and a, and a treat. And then also um, I stop doing it. <laughs> That's another reward. Uh, so she started getting really, really good with this. I mean, she was flipping her head around and running around. And so for her to stand there and be cool with it, I'm, I'm super happy with that. So this is uh, where I introduced the target to her. And uh, she's super smart and just kind of curious. So that kind of helps um, this method really, really well. Uh, and she was getting a little pushy and kind of coming up on me. So I decided to go ahead and teach her to back up. Um, and so I put the target back and she takes a step back and she gets a reward. Um, so she's already learning uh, to back up uh, because she was just trying to, she really likes those carrots. So she was really kind of coming up on me and I'm like, no girlfriend, that's my space. So, and this was uh, the first time I did a click uh, without the treat. And then the second time she did it, she got the treat. Um, which was which was good for her. She's learning. And then here we just kind of finished up. Um, just did a lot of rubbing. I was able to rub all the way down to her withers on both sides and both hands on her face, which I didn't get on video. Um, and her eye is getting really soft here. Very, very happy with where we finished.